So I've gotten to the point in the story where uh, my life really started changing. A lot of things happened that affected me greatly, and I'll tell you some of them. Uh, the first of which was I ended up having to spend uh, almost two months in solitary confinement. So solitary confinement is basically um, the bottom the bottom of the barrel when it comes to already being confined. There's nothing worse than that, and you're just alone in isolation. And it's a, it's a terrible place to be. Um, people are screaming all the time, um, people crying, people committed suicide in there. And it's just uh, people banging their heads on the walls and people defecating on themselves and rubbing it on themselves and throwing it out the door and all over their walls. It's just a nightmare of a place, a really, really bad place. So I'm in this place, and um, again, I, I was reading the Bible, as I often did in my most difficult times in life. And I started being affected by it greatly. I started really giving a lot of thought to, to my life and to what had occurred in, in my life, what circumstances had brought me to this place that I am now. You know, I'm a young man and I'm uh, basically outcasted from society. I'm facing the rest of my life in, in a cage, like an animal. And I'm, I'm, I'm just near my end. I had nothing to look forward to, no hope of anything. And so reflecting on my life in that way really opened my eyes to um, to a different perspective. And I realized that all the things that I thought I knew, all the wisdom that I thought I had uh, was actually wrong. You know, I had been poisoned and I had been poisoned by many different things. Uh, part of it was my environment, my upbringing, circumstance, things that happened to me. But another part of it was uh, my own thoughts and my own um, my own feeling that I understood life and reality and that I, I, I can make decisions on my own and always uh, come out with, with, with the right answer. And I basically started talking to God uh, in that solitary confinement cell in, in a way that I never did before and in, in, in a way of absolute humility, you know, on my knees and telling God that I, I have nothing, you know, I am nothing as a result of my efforts in life. You know, I, I failed and I don't know what to do from this point forward. Uh, I'm, I'm out of answers and my wisdom that I thought I possessed um, has come to an end. And so I started surrendering myself slowly to God uh, in that time there alone. And what started happening, um, Again, keep in mind that this is a very difficult time for me. It's a very extreme circumstance. So some of what I say is going to sound incredible to you and as if it, it couldn't have happened. But this is actually what happened. And um, you may think that I, that I was losing my mind in there and uh, I may have suffered psychosis. And um, that may have contributed a small part to it. And it's understandable for anyone in that circumstance. But I don't attribute what I'm about to tell you to that at all. So as I started developing a relationship with God and changing my, my, my views and surrendering myself, I started having this really bad feeling at nights and as, as if evil were, 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 I was surrounded by evil and evil were trying to get me and trying to pull me back and trying to change my thought process back to what I was. And, and I was hearing voices in my head telling me that everything you're saying, that Bible's all bullshit and stop listening to it. And you know, it's not true. And you know what the fuck the truth is. You know what the fuck the reality is. You know what people have done to you in the past. And you know what they'll do to you if you allow it. And it was just, it was, it was, it was an attack that I know was real for me. It really was. And it, the culmination of that came to a, a point where I actually responded verbally. I, I remember the day and I screamed out and I screamed out and I was screaming at the devil and telling him, you know, how I felt. Fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck you and fuck your lies. Everything you're telling me is a fucking lie because I tried that way. I tried that way and that way brought me here. And though I'm within the fucking den of evil in this terrible fucking place, I would not allow myself to fall victim again to fucking lies. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. 
And so that was the first great turning point in my life um, that I started allowing God to guide me in, in a new direction. And so I spent the time in solitary confinement. You know, um, I came out and I was uh, reassigned to a different unit. And from that unit, there became an opportunity to uh, attend church Bible readings. Uh, and these were uh, held by volunteers who came into the jail. Actually, just one gentleman, one volunteer individual. And so I went. I signed up and I went. And, you know, I went a couple times and I never really said anything. I just sat and observed, and listened. And I couldn't believe, you know, that um, it was, he, this guy was like almost 90 years old, little old man. And he'd come in there and he'd talk about God and his experience going back decades, his whole life. And at the end, he, he brought a little accordion and he played this accordion. And the man would just be so happy talking about God in the middle of this fucking terrible place full of fucking degenerates and dangerous people, violent people. And here's this little old man. And in the beginning, I was skeptical. I was skeptical of him, which is why I didn't really contribute and talk. But after a while, I realized that this, this is genuine. This is what this man is about. He really believes this. He has no ulterior motive. He's here just to help. And um, so I started going to that. I ended up forcing some of my friends to go with me, even though they didn't like it. Because uh, once I made the decision that I was going to change for the better, and I realized there was a better path, uh, I insisted that those close to me also participate, whether they liked it or not. So we all went, and um, you know they didn't last. I'm not going to force people beyond the beginning point. Give it a try. But that man ended up dying, unfortunately. He was an old man, and he, you know, he died. So I lost that. But I gained a lot from that because I saw what it really meant to be a man of God. I was able to see an example in front of me in this terrible place of somebody who only cares to help others, cares more for others than for himself. And so he's living his life in sacrifice, and it made an impact on me. So the next thing that happened um, that had a, a big effect on me, I ended up... Um, Again, I'm, I'm in maximum security settings now, so I'm in another unit, and there's a lot of problems. And I had one of my friends with me. I made another great friend in there. Um, and so I had my people, they had their people. There was always opposing sides. And as much as I tried to be um, positive and avoid all that you know, politics and bullshit, you end up getting involved in it somehow. And so there came a time where uh, and, and again, keep in mind, I was held in, in very high regard from a lot of people all over the jail. And so there was a reputation that I had and people respected me, but people also feared me in a sense that they knew that um, you know, I wouldn't hesitate and I'm not going to be victimized by anybody. And so uh, I, had a, I had an issue with somebody and uh, there was some words said and it was a it was kind of a slight a disrespect to me uh, in front of people and so the answer was that um, you know it was, it was it was about to escalate into a huge thing and it was about to be you know 20 on 20 fighting each other right there and stabbing each other but rather than let that happen you know I, I addressed it the way I, I believe uh, things like that should be addressed one-on-one -on -one. and I told the guy you know that we will handle it ourselves and so we decided that we were gonna lock in a room and fight and so we, um, was, you know, they, they were they were hesitant on his side because they were afraid. You know, they, they, they thought I was going to stab them and go in there with a weapon, which was not the case. You know, I go in and fight fair. And so they, we let them pick whatever cell they want. We go in, we lock in. And um, we started fighting. You know, in that fight, I made a mistake of going in there with, I had like a rag on my head, like a bandana kind of thing. And um, when I went in there, as soon as we started fighting, it came down over my eyes. And so the guy had a couple seconds to just hit me. Uh, and he hit me right in the face, and he got some good shots in. But uh, as soon as I lifted that up, you know, um, I grabbed the guy. I grabbed him, and we, we were in the cell again, and I lifted him up and threw him against the back wall. So there's a metal toilet with a sink attached, and I have him against the wall, and I'm actually choking him. And I'm choking the guy, and I pull back my hand, and I, I'm about to hit him. I'm about to fucking break this guy's face. 
And something happened to me. Again, as I mentioned in one of the last videos, things tend to go into slow motion in extreme uh, situations. And so it happened again, you know, and everything slowed down. And I just looked at this man. And I looked at his eyes. And I just, I couldn't, I realized at that moment that the influence from me, from the person I thought I was, from my own experiences, my own personalities, has now become less than that of God. And it was more important to me to do what I thought was the right thing, the godly thing, and to look at things from that perspective. And I was seeing it from those eyes for the first time, rather than from my own eyes, that of man. And at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, I was really strong back then, really strong. You know, I was benching almost 500 pounds and I was doing thousands of push-ups. I was really, really strong. Uh, and I knew what I could have done to him. And I assessed the situation. You know, I had him, I was choking him and his head is against this concrete cinder block wall. And I cocked back. And as I did that, you know, when I froze, I just realized if I hit this guy, you know, um, I could kill him here. I could kill this guy. I'm really going to hurt him no matter what. No matter what, if I can move forward and, and just do what has to be done now according to this environment and to what I used to know, you know, I'm going to hurt this man. And I looked right in his eyes and something happened, you know, and I just, I realized that that's not me. That's not me anymore. And I, and I looked right in his eyes. As we looked at each other's eyes, I let him go. And I stepped back. And he looked at me in shock. And, he, you know, he... Uh, he didn't know what to make of it. And people were looking in from the cell window. They were all shocked. You know, my people and his people. And so we stepped back from each other and I asked him, you know, you want to continue? You want to finish this? And he said, no. He said, no. And so, you know, uh, one of the cops came, opened the door and let us out. And it was, um, it was the first time I realized that I don't give a fuck what people are going to think or how they're going to interpret my actions. What I care about more now is doing the right thing. And at that moment, I realized that I'm no longer a man of the world, but I've become a man of God because God had influenced me in such a great way, in such a strong way, that it was more important to me that I honor that and that relationship than I care at all about what others are going to think about me. And so I'm, I'm, I hope that in my sharing this, it's not an easy thing to do, some of you may benefit from it. And that's really the truth about what happened. Thanks.